The real estate group or the house group, if you like, um, was tasked with essentially finding the house, which seems easy enough, I guess, but um, needed to really take into consideration the kind of house that would be would be really workable for Adam. And so we fed off a lot from the the other subgroups. So I guess the housemates groups and then also feeding off a lot from family and the other circle members and of course Adam's um, supporters, his workers, who all uh, you know have spent time with Adam over the years and get a real feel for the things that he's going to enjoy. So we had to feed that into I guess the emotional space of the house, so getting an understanding of how big it would need to be, um, you know, what sort of space Adam would like to occupy, where he's most free and happy and comfortable, so indoor outdoor areas, social areas, you know, all that kind of stuff so they're probably the that, that was probably the starting point of considering the house itself but then the practical side of it was you know where is this house going to be what's this house going to look like how big is this house going to be how many rooms and that's where we fed through the other groups on the practical sides of things Deciding on a location was um, interesting because it started off with sort of going over um, towards Newtown way because Adam has this great um, bunch of friends over there. A lot of his um, his supporters live over there, the people that work with him. Um, and he knows a lot of the local cafes and all that kind of stuff. So he's got this really great social life over, over around the sort of Newtown Erskineville area. So we automatically all thought that that would be perhaps the best place. Cause if you're naturally, you, you're going to be drawn to the place that, that your friends are and, and that your social circles are. Um, but then it changed over time because I guess the practicality of it is that, you know, Adam's moving out of home for the first time and it's really important that he's near his family and um, and that it's easy for them to, to get to him and vice versa. Um, so that was that was interesting because there was a, there's a large group of us, so not just the um, the circle group, but also Adam's supporters and other family members, all having a quite a strong opinion about you know how Adam a, as a person would go. Wait a minute, what do I want? You know, do I want what my parents want and my family want, or I, do I want to break out of my own? Um, so I, th you know, at this point, it sort of ended up that it's in the eastern suburbs area, um, but you know, it, probably around Bondi, which is sort of around the area of his parents, but you know, still, still able to be closer to the places that he wants to get to. So there's sort of been a, there's been a compromise. And I guess that's what you, what you would naturally do, the practicalities of it. And then, you know, your social life, you've got to always weigh these things up, don't you? The housemate agreement initially, um, from our perspective, was I guess a legal document like a lease and an agreement um, that the people that live with Adam understand the terms of the lease agreement. But I guess getting into um, the practicalities of what is your responsibility when you live with Adam? You're, you're living with someone who is unique and who requires in-depth understanding and support and you're going to get so much more out of living with Adam than you probably realize if you're just signing a legal document. So um, so the housemate agreement sort of started off as a bit of a dry document that probably looked like a bit of a regular um, lessee kind of thing and has moved into you know some, some of the practical understandings of responsibility and how your week will look, how your hours might be divided up, how your mornings might look with Adam, how your evenings might look with Adam. Um, so really embedding Adam's life in into that agreement, which is which is really important, is at the heart, I guess, of of, um, of Adam's life. So the practicalities of finding the ideal house for Adam were really around, um, I guess, considering that there's a few personalities involved, and you know, with with the people who support Adam in either a paid or an unpaid or, you know, a family relationship and all the relationships that, um, that he has, we're all, we're all, we feel we all have a strong understanding of the kind of um, space that Adam would like to occupy. So I guess it's kind of three flatmates 
and Adam and then all of his people, which I think is really interesting. So, um, so I think the practicality of it will, will mean that a lot of stuff is fleshed out over time because people are strongly passionate about this working for Adam and him having a really good first moving out experience, um, which is fantastic. And, um, having, having the new, um, housemates involved so that they also feel really comfortable in their space as anyone would want to when you move out. So I think all, all of that, all of that kind of stuff will make for, um, both an interesting emotional and practical ride to bring all of those elements together. With regards to finding a place, we're just going into the open, open rental market. Um, you know, we may, there's a possibility of using a broker who would be able to potentially just find something that is to our specifications, which is open to anyone. Um, and that's just a, a great little niche boutique kind of thing to do, I think. Um, but, but having said that, um, yeah, it, you know, if any of us find, find a place that we, you know, I think we were all going to start keeping our eyes open. And if any of us find, find a place on the rental market that, that we feel would, would really fit that, that criteria of the kind of space that Adam and the housemates would, would want to occupy, then yeah, we'll see how we go. I mean, this whole thing really is a, a, a massive group effort, which is really, really exciting.